Welcome to the last home game of the JV basketball season. Mill River taking on Fair Haven. So I got a couple of local schools among our mission tonight. Should be a good contest. I noticed that one of the players, one of the top players from Mill River, Morgan Sharon, number 14, in street clothes tonight. So I don't know if she's injured or unable to play, but she's not suited up. So I can assume that she will not play. But in his Fair Haven JV squad, I saw him earlier in the season and some good athletes. I expect a competitive, good, close ball game. And Dan Latkin, Peter C. the officials, they'll toss the ball up, and Kyle Weatherhog will have it to start off. As in case you haven't figured it out, that's Mill River in their home whites. Like I said, this will be the last regular home game of the JV basketball season. And that steal by Fairhaven, and I'll get their numbers down. That's a two point shot taken from the outside, and it's good. Oh, bombing away was Elizabeth Files. So Files with the game's first basket, and she was clearly over the arc as the shot was nothing but twine. And good start for Fairhaven hitting their first outside shot. That's Turjan down in the corner to Weatherhawk. She wants to go baseline. That one's taken away from her by Ellis. Seems like no matter what Fairhaven team I do, boys or girls, whatever year I've done it, there's always an Ellis on the team. Just like a Doran and a Dorian and all those names have always been very synonymous with Fairhaven sports. Fox getting the start, number 34, will flip the ball over to Weatherhawk. And right now the spacing just off for the Mill River squad. Everybody kind of clumped in the wrong area. Turijan coming out to meet the pass. She stands just outside the arc, and that will be saved, and it'll be inbounds, and up ahead. Ellis got the ball off to her teammate, and that shot no good. It was number 31, Studley, who got the shot up in the game's first foul, will be called. And it's a hold call. It's a possession foul. It's going to be Mill River basketball on the inline. And I'll have the varsity version of Fairhaven Mill River, provided I survive the JV game and my equipment survives the JV basketball game. And Weatherhog wants to go down inside to Turjan, and boy, you see those blue jerseys collapse around her. Jump ball will be called. And it's going to go the other end of the floor to Fairhaven. So the Slaters in those blue uniforms, very familiar blue uniforms. And yeah, I uh, wrap up my JV season here at for girls with Mill River and I, I wrap up the boys JV season here at Mill River as they have a Saturday game schedule it's Muzzy and I checked with the pronunciation it is Muzzy number five Shirley Muzzy for Mill River I went the whole season and never got a chance to ask anyone but I went between Musy and Muzzy and I was told tonight it is Muzzy so I, my apologies it took me the whole season to get it down and hopefully I was told correctly Yeah, well, Kyle Wilson's varsity team on Munger Vision at a later date. It's Weatherhog. Fairhaven up by a 2-0 score. They've had to better the play here in the first two minutes of the contest. And that's going to be, will it be stolen away as it ran down by Files. And look at that, a little Harlem Globetrotters stuff dribbling down on the floor. Fox will pick up the loose ball, take the one dribble, need to outlet the pass to get it to Weatherhog. And they'll go off from the hands of Fox. She looked like she didn't expect the pass. And she will have a chat with the teammate Weatherhog as they walk down to the defensive end of the floor. And this is going to be number 21 bringing the ball up into play. Maycumber, so Haley Maycumber, number 21 with the crossover between circles to the elbow to Ellis. She ball fake, tried to dribble to the baseline. Emma Weatherhog cut her off. There are a couple Weatherhogs out there. Stuart Lee, oh, nice step to the basket. Just didn't get the finish. Fairhaven with the offensive rebound. We'll get another chance now to set up their offense as Files with the balls got the game's only basket. She was number 11. That's Ellis with the one dribble back to Files. Defensively, that's Muzzy right on her. And well, she never gave up the baseline. She rode her all the way around, and that's going to be Dalto, number 10. Got the ball down along to Studley and looking to kick it back out. Oh, great ball fake. Up and got it. That's Files with a sweet move right there and has all four of the points in the basketball game. Boy, Weatherhog brought that crossover right out in front of her, and Ellis almost came up with the steal. Turjan, a great look at the last second, stripped away of the. I think that was Maycumber that stripped the ball away from Muzzy. And so far, Fairhaven, a couple changes coming in. Number 25, Jenna Smith, along with number 20, Cassidy Auger. And again, I, I like 
I don't like doing any of the games, but I like doing when you got local schools or in the, my driving range, like Fairhaven. You know, because I've, I've watched these kids play some JV ball games for the last, well, the last season and this season. Again, Muzzy getting away with some hand checking there, riding on the, the, the offensive player. Ely, 15, coming in, one of the captains for Mill River, along with Robin Shapiro. I should mention Turjan is another captain out there for Mill River. And I believe Kyle Weatherhog is another captain. They want to lob it down inside. Boy, they did. Down inside and tough shot. Offensive rebound came down to Studley on the wheel of the hole. She lost it on the dribble. Ball came apart off the hard court. Shapiro ripping it out there and they let her play through it. I love the fact they didn't blow the whistle early. Ely with one of those arm sleeves on for support, I suppose. Weatherhog back to Ely and she's going to back the ball back out. No shot clock to worry about. We're at the midway point of this first quarter play. 4 nothing. Fairhaven with the lead. Shapiro with the grab and the ball to Ely. Right now they've overloaded the weak side of the floor offensively. Oh, and Cornell, I missed her. How could I miss her? She just didn't miss. She got a three ball. That's Madison Cornell, number 23, with Mill River's first shot, first basket. Cuts the lead to one at four to three. She's a good looking three point shooter. She's had some games where she just gets on a streak out there and can hit three, four in a row. You see him look down inside. That was Auger to Smith to Studley. Tries to duck up underneath and. Teresa, I won't have none of that. She stood her ground, drives baseline, we're gonna have a foul called. No, we're gonna be step on the baseline out of bounds called. See Cornell staying there. She's waiting for the substitutions to clear. And well, I can see Lamaru, Marissa Lamaru out there for Fairhaven. And I'm sure there was another change, which I will have to search for and find. Oh, number 30, that's who came in also. Kamara, that's who number 30 is, Kamara. Now, when I did a game earlier this year, Kamara had a huge ball game. As Lamaru gave the ball back and files. Well, you know what bugs me about the kids? They take those mouth guards in and out to call out the plays. You gotta learn to talk with your mouth full. That's how you get to be management later in life. And that shot from the outside, no good. It'll room out on files, her first miss, and Turjan. Got the rebound, and here comes Cornell. Yeah, they stop her from taking the ball into the hole. And that was number 25, Smith, that did a good job defensively. Auger slows it down. Auger waits, and Auger looking for a pass to a teammate. We'll get it down to Files. Shapiro, a little over aggressive defensively, didn't get burned, but Kamara will take the shot. Front rim it, and the rebound on that far side by Shapiro, and she was held by Lamaru. And that is the second team foul. Against Fairhaven, first foul on Lamaru, and this all taking place with 2.16 to go in the first quarter of play. And you're watching Munger Vision, of course, if you're watching JV basketball. Over the many, many years, I always brought you the JV game. It didn't have to be a Rutland MSJ JV game like the other guys just could only do those special games. I do all the JV games. And coming back in will be Maycumber, number 21. Four Fairhaven and Bloom Files will sit down number 11, and she's got all four of Fairhaven's points here in the first quarter playing. Fox wants to go to Turjan, and she wants to go up and looking for a whistle, didn't get it off from the hands of Kamara, and it's gonna be not off the hands of Kamara, it's gonna be Fairhaven basketball. It's Megan Fox coming in for Turjan. So that's 34 for 25 in white for Mill River. And Maycumber taking back over the point position. And Mill River in that 2 3 zone defense. We're going to swing the ball around the side. A well, great entry pass to Lamaru in the fall. But they just reversed the basketball on the perimeter. And it was a very passive 2 3 zone, and they got burned for it. That'll be the first foul of the ball game called on the Minutemen, and that's going to be on Shapiro, number 21. So. Lamaru will roll it in there. And I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. It's Weatherhog number 12. Kyle Weatherhog 12 will sit down. And that's Hewitt coming in the ball game now. Number 20 is Sarah Hewitt from Mill River. And got them both. Goes 6 to 3, and then they'll press after the main basket. 
And Ely putting the ball on the floor with the crossover. Didn't work off the screen. Fox has set a screen up on this near side, and that's going to be, nope. Nice box out. Battle for the ball. Fox got it. Oh, what composure by Fox. Once she secured the ball, there was no defender around her. She just squared up, took her time, and banked it off the backboard and in. Makes it a 6-5 ball game. Fox is first two points of the contest. Smith looking inside for Kamara. Tell you what, that was a great entry pass, but a tough spot to take the shot. She's actually, if there is such a thing, she was too far into the basket. And what they call it? Well, they're not calling a jump ball. They said she stepped on the inline. The ball will go out of bounds, and it'll be Jenna Smith, number 25. Handed the basketball. She'll look to put it in play with 67 seconds left in this first quarter. Not a lot of scoring, but it's been a good game. Sometimes it takes the JVs a while to kind of get revved up. Sometimes it's just a choppy game. I mean, you know, at the end of a long season, whether I'm, no matter who, travel call. Because I cover other schools besides Mill River. You know, like I've said, there's, I watch many JV games, boys and girls, men and women, whatever you want to call them. And at the end of the season, I can probably say, wow, well, there were six out of 50 or more outstanding JV games, so. But it's getting to see tomorrow's Varsity Stars today. It's getting some recognition for their program, for their hard work. It's an activity, it's local sports. You know, it doesn't get counted into the mix when the professionals say they're those local sports leaders. You know, yeah, maybe on a big game somewhere, a high school varsity game, but I don't see them at the Glazik tournament. Uh, that's local sports. I don't see them at the JV ball games. That's local sports. I never read anything about these under varsity class sporting events. Uh, you know, senior Babe Ruth, junior Babe Ruth. That's all local sports. The only guy I see covering all that stuff is Minister Munger. So Fox literally, or that's Cornell, literally just rolled the ball into Fox and she missed the shot. About an eight footer and just didn't sink it. 6-5 with 30 seconds going to first quarter. Fairhaven with the ball with the lead. Maycumber will kick it off to Smith. She'll swing the ball back over to Maycumber. Auger, so you're getting that time. That time they learned from the last time. The defense saw them rotate that ball around and Ely reaching behind her. will get that hot potato under control and she'll slow it down and they're going to play for the final shot. They're below 10 seconds on the clock right now. And oh yeah, Sarah Hewitt with her first basket of the ball game at 7-6. Bill River with their first lead of the contest. One second, it'll count. Yes, off the mark. So a 7-6 Mill River lead in JV basketball action over Fairhaven on Munger Vision. Between quarters, get a little action here from Mill River JV cheerleading squad. I'd like to seriously take this time to thank all the people who walked in front of me. And didn't hold the door open for me tonight because so I was coming into the gym and I, you know who you are. I'm standing there with two huge equipment bags, a tripod, a roll of 100 foot electrical cord and a camera case. And it'd be the darndest thing. People would turn around two to three feet away from you, look right at you and just turn around, walk right in and slam the door in your face. And it happened on one, two, three different doors and adults, not children, adults. And I'll tell you, I was, Quite a low life and dirt bag growing up, a low low income person, but I, I knew that you hold the door for people and all those basic rules and you better believe I did all that stuff as Weatherhog looks like she might got a finger in the eye and she's trying to shake it off as Emma Weatherhog helping up Kyle Weatherhog and actually they called a fall on that. They called a finger in the eye fall. And Burden, number 33 in the basketball game for Mill River, she's gonna inbound the pass and see the official time out there, Pete. Well, Mr. C checking on Weatherhog. But again, no, I just really, I'd like to thank those people for not having the decency to hold the door open for me. It made my job that much harder to get in. You know who you are. Now, back to JV basketball action. Just underway in the second quarter play. I have Mill River, Fairhaven, JV basketball action on Munger Vision, the final JV game of the home schedule for Mill River as Dalto will get the rebound, put on all kinds of moves there, and then kick the ball out to Maycumber. But you can see right there that that Mill River defense a lot more active right now than it was earlier in the game, and a travel called on Auger, and the foul will go over to 
Mill River, and they're going to put him side out over in front of the Mill River bench. And Burden heading over, and she will take the ball out of bounds. I believe then tonight's going to be seniors' night on the varsity game as they'll have the ceremony. Ball. Studley got back, and they were trying to hit Terrijan with the pass, and that didn't work out for him. And Fairhaven led most of the first quarter. It wasn't until inside 30 seconds that Mill River took the lead for the first time tonight. And Dalto to Studley from the free throw line. No. Rebound in the corner. Chased down. And well, Smith falling down. Made a perfect pass to Studley. And Burden will tie her up coming in from the back side. Undetected. Will reach in and grab the basketball. I'm not sure. Oh, they want the basketball, and the cheerleaders won't give it back. There they go. Well, there's a reason they're cheerleading, not playing. They were hiding the basketball, and I don't know if they know the importance of that actually having basketball out there. That'd be a fall on that. Yeah, Dalto got the ball down in the sweet spot and went to put the shot up, and she was fouled. She's going to get two free throws, and that will stop the clock at 6.41 to go in the half. And Dalto getting set now. The first shot just a little bit off the mark. She's got to hit the rim here on the second one, or it'll be a violation. Files number 11 coming back in the ball game. She has four of the six points for Fairhaven, and then number 13 also checking in for the first tonight time tonight. It's Amanda Dorn. Those are Fairhaven changes, and that ball will be tipped from Muzzy of Mill River to her teammate, Terjean. Then Muzzy made the grab in front of Weatherhog, and Muzzy turned around and collides with Dalto, and I believe the ball will stay with Fairhaven. Yeah, and that was a rough trip down the floor for Muzzy. And again, they're going to have no pressure extending in the back court. They're going to have Emma Weatherhog sneak up a little bit on top of that uh, zone. They're going to swing the ball around to Dalto. Mike got away with some steps and travel call. No, they let her travel the first initial portion of the play, but then when she got to the end of it and tried to lay it up and in. Burden looking and not. What happened there is Burden threw the ball and it got tipped back. Burden hadn't cleared the in line. She was out of bounds when she tried to regain possession. And Fairhaven taking the ball out of bounds. On their inline, Studley passed up the open look, got the ball off to May Cumber, and Dorn was the intended target, and Weatherhog got bumped by Dorn, and they all crashed to the floor, and everybody's going to get up, and Weatherhog's tough anyway. She's a soccer player. And they're going to run that stack formation on the inbounds play. And for Haven, of course, defensively overplay to the Offensive side of midcourt, and Weatherhog able to bounce back. And there's Kyle Weatherhog waits for the screen set by Burden, and I believe they dribble it off from the foot of Files of Fairhaven. That was the case, and Burden again, number 33, and White will take the ball about six minutes to go in the second quarter play. And Emma Weatherhog and Doran matched up out there. That was quite a battle just to get that 18 inches of hardwood floor. Muzzy being guarded by Dalto and was the pass touched by Ellis. I'm waiting for Peter C. Does. Yeah, the official took a little time there to make up his mind, but he'll say, well, that's last touch by Mill River, Fairhaven basketball. It's Files, we'll fling it on this side and Dalto back to Files to Ellis. You can see him to duck up underneath and oh, set on the rim, it wouldn't drop. Muzzy with the rebound. Outlets to Emma Weatherhog and we'll bring it back to Burden. Again, a very low scoring game, but really not a poorly played game. Got a push from behind and that will be the sixth team foul on Fairhaven. It's no shot yet for Mill River. Obviously the next foul committed will be the seventh. And if it's not an offensive foul or a player control foul, there'll be shots coming up for Mill River. Still a lot of time left in the third quarter, 519. Fox and Cornell, 34 and 23 respectively, into the basketball game for Mill River. And that's Cornell, who's got a three-point basket tonight. And that's Weatherhawk took the shot off the mark, and Dolfo got the rebound. Wants to outlet the pass to Auger. We'll get it halfway up the midcourt floor. And Auger 
We'll find Doran. Ellis likes it. Got it. Nobody guarded her, so she just squared up, stepped into it, and got it. And that will give Fairhaven back to lead at 9 to 7. And it's Seaside back and forth. It's been close. I don't know why I won't finish that way. Have a nail biter here to end the JV season. Cornell. Got it. We're going to give her two on that. Well, that's long range. She must have been just on the line. So Cornell with five points off the bench. All from long range. Studley got in the paint and selected not to take the shot. And Dalto can't hit the three ball there. And Fox plants the pivot foot, got the rebound, and then gave it off the little pass off the side to Weatherhog. So Cornell hit the trailer. And Cornell said, I'll try it from this side for a three ball. Nope, her first miss from the outside. And the long rebound chased down by Studley, and she'll bring it back around to Ellis, and then now Auger's hands. That's where they were trying to work the ball to all along, was to Auger. And Doran touched it last. Yeah, it goes off from Doran to Fairhaven. It's Kamara, number 30, for Fairhaven, and Morgan Brown, number 24, checking in the basketball game for the Slaters. And again, Morgan Sharon, number 14 from the River, sitting on the bench with her Street clothes, civilian clothes on, along with her jersey, but so I can only assume that she seems like a good kid. I can't believe she got in trouble and is not playing. Maybe it's like an injury or something or a sickness. And on that made basket, that'll break the tie. It'll go back to 11 9 now. Mill River reassuming the lead. Well, that'd be cool to have a close JV game to end the JV season on. Oh yeah, we're going to have a timeout taken by Fairhaven. You've got it right there, 11-9 Mill River, 3.36 to go and a half. You're watching Munger Vision. Now they're going to rotate the ball. And again, tough shot. They got it down low, but again, not in the greatest position down low. Kind of too far into the back, the rim that time. As Ely will get the push in the front court against Brown. Shapiro stepped out, tried to push the ball down along the baseline. Right now, I'm just trying to identify what the defense is. And well, hard to tell there because they just lost the handle on the ball. Brown, number 24, felt Weatherhawk coming up from behind. And a great catch and too hard. I think Kamara might have been surprised when she turned how open she was. And the foul will be committed on this side by Ellis, number 12. So Alexis Ellis was for the foul. And I'm playing one on one. Yeah, and the board's green with me, so they'll bring it down. This is another floor. So with 3.05 to go, the river will be in a shooting situation foul wise the rest of this first half of play. And it'll be Madison Cornell taking the shots. Tipped around and Kamara. Good rebound, good strong rebound as she boxed out Fox, who's a good rebounder herself. Dalto. Oh, she, that was a beautiful idea right there to make the pass off the jump shot fake. Ely angled off from the basket. Shapiro had it lost to Ellis with it. will pivot around and get away from the defenders. And she says, what the heck, I'll bring it up the floor myself. Auger. Nowhere to go baseline. Oh, what an incredibly perfect pass. What a perfect pass. I mean, Kamara got the bucket. That was pretty, but that pass was just a thing of beauty. And now go off from Fox's hands, out of bounds on the turnover for Haven. And an 11 to 11 score, we'll have the basketball. And they want Auger to go and bring the ball and bounce to Ellis. And Ellis looked left, went right. Brown with the basketball. Her pass just did beat the fingertips of. I don't think it was tipped. Nope. Going to go down the other end of the Florida Mill River. Very simple play right there that Fairhaven has ran three or four times. Very successful here. But, uh, Brown stayed back there, and oh, I will go off from the foot of. Cornell, and that's one of those JV things. I actually see it on the varsity level too. Is I don't know why they try to beat people against the sideline uh, with with the press. Bring the ball back to the middle of the floor. There are athletes out there who are just that good that they can beat you up the sideline on their dribble, but they're far and few between. Oh, what a great shot by Dalto! 
just aggressively taking it to the hole. Breaks the tie, 13-11, Fairhaven, and they're going to say Mill River basketball. Has Cornell coming all the way from the far side of the court to put the ball into play with just a minute 46 to go in the first half of this JV home finale for Mill River. But Ely with a good job of controlling that ball. It was a fast ball thrown right at her head. Cornell got it. Boy, she that's no accident. She's a shooter. She's a scorer. And that will give Mill River back lead at 14 to 13, 90 seconds to go. Ellis says, I can do that. Nope, she'll be off the mark this time. Jump ball called as Fox will tie up Smith and Hewitt gonna come in the ball game number 20 along with Turgeon 25 for Mill River. <laughs> and just three team falls on the Minutemen. As Weatherhawk tipped the ball away from Kamara and that Kept the river with possession. Kamara had a chance for the steal, missed, timed it, and Turjan got fouled on. It does matter if it's on the floor or not, because if she's in the act of shooting, it's two shots. If it's on the floor, it's a one and one. And I think I saw Dan Latkin say one and one on the floor, so Turjan had the line and shoot the front end of the one and one in here. So Sh Shapiro Cornell, Weatherhog. Hewitt and Turjan out there for Mill River. M Maycomber with the basketball to Kamara on great catch and then the save. Nope, couldn't save. I thought she might have flicked it off the Mill River player out of bounds, but she did not. So the Minutemen with that one point lead will have to wait for Studley to check in for Kamara for Fairhaven. And Studley, of course, will be wearing number 31. And Mill River going to take a 30 second timeout as they lead by one with 67 seconds to play in the half. Set to go, and we'll see what develops after that Mill River timeout. Matthias Shapiro just hit the deck hard and got right back up. Graham came back from the timeout, and they changed up their defensive look. And nice tip by Smith, and then the Cornell falling to the floor, and everybody looks like it's going to be okay. And some handshakes here, some good sportsmanship. Blocking foul called, and that will still be the one on one. There's Cornell leaving. Nope. Now she's coming back. I don't know, she started walking toward the bench and they went and got her to take the shots and she came back with a big old smile on her face, so. She thought it was funny, so. She'll miss that shot. Jenna Smith got to the rebound and they're even trailing by one with 50 seconds to go in the half to lead. Hard pass to handle, Ellis in the corner, and Dalto with the drive, waiting for the call here. Two shots coming up, so whatever it was, they say happened in the act of shooting, and Dalto. Getting set. That's his last 67 seconds. Seemed to take a whole half to finish up here. She'll miss that shot. The foul was on Turjan, her first personal. Fox now coming in for Cornell, and that's a change from Mill River, and Fox will be number 34. And that one will miss also. So Turjan with the rebound, yet another rebound for Turjan. Oh, and Weatherhawk got bailed out as Hewitt. Got the ball to Turjan, and they'll just Trying to work it back to Weatherhog, and there should be a whistle. There you go. They go, yeah, it should be down on the baseline. That's where they're going. So Fairhaven catching a break there. The fact where Weatherhog touched the ball, it's going to put Fairhaven already in their offensive end of the floor with just 27 seconds to go before halftime. Now, I'm not saying they're going to play for the last shot, or they might not even get the last shot. They're going to say last touch by Megan Fox of Mill River. Yeah, so Fairhaven with that box formation. Stooley came all the way on that step out from the opposite side of the floor. And there's the swing down and Dalto fouled. Yeah. Well, the first mistake wasn't the foul. It was where they gave up position. Uh, defensively, they let Dalto get down in the blocks. And once you allow the ball to go down there, usually it's not going to be too good for you defensively. 
So it's still 15 seconds to go in the half. Dalto shot up and a little bit hard. Trying to get another chance here to get this thing tied up at 14. It's been a very low scoring basketball game. And Burden, number 33, going to be coming in for, I believe, Turjan, who picked up her second foul. So they don't want Turjan to pick up her third foul with just 15 seconds left. So they're going to sub her out. And we'll stay at a one-point deficit, Shapiro to Weatherhog. Now, plenty of time, even with the press on, making burn up time to get off a shot. And I think they got to call it travel, yeah. Burden had a little more time than she thought there. She certainly did have that sense of urgency. They want to, he wants to change position after the timeout with the ball on the side out. So Fairhaven looking to get one last playoff here and get a decent shot off. They have 5.4 seconds to work with. And so Dalto will have nobody on the ball defensively. Ellis came all the way back to meet it. And that's Hewitt on there defensively. Now, no Rivers got a foul to give, yeah. So I'm not sure what they talked about in the huddle, but it didn't come out on the floor that way. And it'll be a 14-13 Mill River lead at the half in JV basketball action on Munger Vision. Underway in the second half. See, Fraven's got possession and files looking to start off the way she started off the first part of the ball game here in the second half. She'll miss this time. She had the first two baskets of the ball game for Fairhaven as they trail 14-13 right now. And Dalto will swing it out, Maycumber with the ball, and ends up in the hands of Ellis. And this is what they ran all the first half against that zone defense. And long rebound against that 2-3 zone made it an easy re offense rebound for Studley in the bucket. Little Kevin McHale action there by Studley. With the pivot, then the duck up underneath. And for Haven will take the lead back, and the steal by Files under control. Who hustled back there? Muzzy got back and knocked the ball away. Good defensive play by Muzzy. There's the Wilson men over there, Jay and Kyle, a couple legends. Of course, Jay Wilson was a legend here at Mill River as he led the basketball, men's basketball team, the titles, basketball championship. And of course, he's gone on to make his mark in the community and other ways, but soccer coach, assistant soccer coach up at that high school by the dump there in the city. Dalto going to go to the line. She got fouled 17-14, Fairhaven. So Dalto looking to make it a four-point lead. That's the third foul on Turjan. And I do believe she's the first player for either side to pick up three personal fouls. Fairhaven going to pick up at midcourt. And that's Weatherhog being guarded by Maycumber. That's Emma. Weatherhog with it. I'm looking for an indication. Two point shot. So Emma Weatherhog, first shot she's taking tonight, and it's just twine, man, all twine. 18 16 for Haven's lead down to two. That ball slapped back out, and Kyle Weatherhog got Emma with her, and no. I'm trying to see Chase down rebound. Dalto having a big start here to the third quarter. Ended up with the basketball for. Fairhaven, what a beautiful catch on the run as that Studley twisting around. And that's an athletic move. That's a varsity move right there. Ellis, Weatherhog, and not enough not travel. There you go. That's a good call. That's the correct call. I thought it's been a pretty well officiated ball game, to be honest with you. Not that my opinion amounts to a rat's patootie, but. It has been too tight, and it has been a very loose call. Yeah, it's been just perfectly called as far as that. Oh, look at Emma Weatherhog getting a start here in the third quarter, making a count, and oh my goodness. Weatherhog to Weatherhog, and some NBA steps there allowed. 18 all as each team with a little burst here to start the third quarter. Dalto down in the low post, put the shot up, and Studley will get to the missed shot, and Studley Tell you what, that was some hard work by Studley. She tried to pass her half the Mill River team and ended up receiving her own pass. And I tell you what, Terijan, lucky on that. She could have been a foul call. Dalto down on the floor and not getting up. You can see the playback here. Yeah, they're trying to tell the ref. Ball out of bounds, and yeah, 
What they're waiting for was possession, and Stud or uh, Dalto on her shot got an arm across the face, and I'm thinking sore nose, but we'll see as Dalto quickly up on to her feet, and the trainer, the young guy, the younger guy. Well, actually, he is the only young guy out there on the right. And that will bring Lamaru, number 14, into the ballgame and take Dalto's spot. Now, that's too bad to get injured, I mean, but in any if any aspect, but Dalto was having a big third quarter for Fair Haven. 18 all, and it'll be Maycumber taking the ball out of bounds with Files in the back court. Elizabeth Files. I'm not sure. I thought I heard a whistle. Files thought she heard a whistle. Nice grab on the side by Studley. Maycumber open, a little long and strong. And Muzzy got the rebound and traveled. Yeah. The contact created drove Muzzy backwards as she took three steps back and got called for the travel call. Studley all down in the low post. Beautiful. Great recognition. Lamaru not only created a passing lane, but pinned her defender behind her, and it just that was just too easy. Fox will get the ball off on this side to Kyle Weatherhog, and yeah, that's going to be a hold, a hand check, where you want Kyle, it'll be on Ellis, number 12 of Fairhaven. So each team now with a team foul apiece, and the score 20 to 18, Fairhaven with the lead. And I am looking as Ellis and Files sit down. It looks like Auger and Smith. And Jenna Smith came in. Those are Fairhaven changes. And Poitourjean drove the paint hard and paid the price. And that long pass be tipped away. Emma Weatherhog with the tip. Created the turnover. And boy, she started off this third quarter on fire. As Emma caught her own pass like on a yo-yo. Didn't let it go down inside. Kyle Weatherhog will get it to side. Turjan. No doubt about it, Studley helps her up, but I can't believe she turned to the ref and said, what? As it was an easy call on the bump. Well, I guess if you agreed with the officials as a player, you wouldn't be very competitive, so that's probably a good move by Studley, number 31. Emma Weatherhog with the catch, and Fox came up looking at the shot, but there was really nowhere to get it off. Muzzy will go back and pick up the loose basketball to Emma Weatherhog, feeling it, got it! Three ball for Emma. The other weather hog having a hot third quarter will give Mill River back to lead at 21-20. That's Auger, no good. Long shot, rebound taken down by Fox to Emma Weatherhog to Kyle Weatherhog. So in this case, so far, Emma Weatherhog's been the shooter. And Kyle Weatherhog's point guard, they'll set it up, and boy, Turjan hard into the fans down there. Good effort by Turjan. So what's shaping up to be just a nip and tuck battle all the way through the final whistle? This is the way to close out the JV season on, on Munger Vision. Good, tough local teams playing a close competitive ball game. That was blocked, that'd be Turjan. Picked back up by Kamara, and ball still loose, picked up by Emma Weatherhog. We just can't do anything wrong here in the third quarter. To Shapiro, no, foul will be on Turjan, and that will be, I believe, her fourth. We'll wait and see if I'm remotely in the ballpark. As the board has it, as four, as I do, and I don't see any subs coming off the bench with 3.47 to go in the third quarter. I think they just realized now that Turjan's got four fouls. And Kamara with the good hands will give the ball off to Auger. That was tipped by Kyle Weatherhog into the hands of Madison Cornell, who's now Cornell 23. They've got to know where she is on the perimeter because she was hitting everything she was putting up from the outside in that first half. And it's going to be Burden coming in for Turijan. So that's 33 and white for Mill River coming in. And Turijan will sit down with 326 to go in the third with the four fouls. Two team fouls apiece here. Cornell liking it. Yeah. Couple long twos and a couple threes for her so far. 
And they still haven't made the adjustment defensively. Maybe they're going to talk about that right now. Speculation on my part. But I certainly would mention you got to find 23 on the perimeter and put a body on her. 24-20, Mill River. And again, it is a four-point lead for Mill River. And Doran, double dribbled and traveled. They're going to call the double dribble first. She saw the seam. She just didn't get that information down to her hands on the dribble on the crossover. There's Lambert coming out of the ball game and it looks like Dalto has come back in for Fairhaven. She's made a miracle recovery. The very players are very resilient at this age and it is Dalto 10 back in the ball game. Shapiro wants to kick the ball back out to Kyle Weather against Doran on her defensively. Oh, nice look to Burden, got it. Hey, Burden's a spark plug off the bench. She does a good job off the bench of giving a lot of energy to Mill River. And then it'll rim out. Dalto, offensive rebound, will miss it. What a big battle underneath. Last touch by Fairhaven Mill River basketball. As Cornell will slide down the baseline to Peter C. and get the basketball. There'll be no pressure in the backcourt. 26-20, the Minutemen. Each team at several different points in this ballgame has held the lead. And Emma Weatherhawk, a big reason Mill River's got this lead right here. Long with Cornell right there, shooting again, and nope. Not far enough out for her that time. She's too close. Jump ball, college are in the paint, scrapping for it. And Burden helped up, and she helped tie the ball up. Now give keep possession down here for Mill River. There's Emma Weatherhawk sitting down and Ely taking her spot. And that's Ely right there with the basketball, and they'll swing it back up top. Cornell, got it. See, she was further out. Three threes in the ball game for Cornell unofficially. And that's pretty impressive shooting at the JV level. She should find herself a varsity roster spot next year. And Doran was on the sideline. She hustled, she dove, she went on the floor, but she was out of bounds. And Kyle Weatherhog running the point right now. So they spread the floor, bring Shapiro up top. She'll grab it between circles and just, oh, Doran did make the steal. Doran taking it off to the races. Well, she, nice job of not traveling. And Smith on the trail. Tell you two things, the non-travel by Doran and then the tough catch in a short distance and the shot all one motion by Smith. 29-22 Mill River. That shot will be off the mark. Into the ball game is Jessica Stannard, number 44, and a double dribble call. I'll never forget. That's a couple double dribbles, dribbles now, dribbles on Dorn. I had Rutland, former Rutland coach Dave Kinsman on all back in 96, 97. On my talk show, Sports Beaten. Actually, he was on with Dave Blake. Great coach, Dave Blake. And Shapiro tied up by Dorn, and boy, good battle. He was talking, those guys were talking about going down to the Final Four in the NCAA March Madness, and I think it was in Texas that year, but they are talking about, you know, the atmosphere and the electricity and the greatness of it. And he mentioned to some other basketball fans down here, it could have been another basketball coach, that they were from Vermont, and they were coaches from Vermont. And, the other gentleman said, do you guys still dribble with two hands up there? And uh, it was a much better story when they told it, but you kind of get the just of the humor of Vermont and Vermont basketball. And I just think the last couple double dribble calls in my old age made me flash back to that conversation. Oh, she's over the backcourt, man. They're gonna call her out of bounds anyways, but. We'll have the S Jenna Smith and Maycumber get the ball on the play for the Slaters. With 40 seconds left in the third quarter. That's going to be a foul. Yeah. Dalto being guarded by Burton. And I'm not sure who actually, yeah, 33 is Burton. Burton, and she got the foul. Is Dalto trying to post her up. And it's, it's been a well-coached, well-played game by everybody. Standard, 
swings the ball out to Smith and now Maycumber. Little strong with her shot and Cornell, 27 seconds to go in the third. Cornell to Ely and there's plenty of time on that clock. And they've got Dalto out guarding Cornell way outside now. You got it. I mean, the kids, three times three is nine and four. She's got at least 13 points, if not more. And it's all come from beyond the arc. Eight seconds, seven seconds as they're taking it down for the last shot. And boy, big collision. And I'm just waiting to see who in the Slater uniform picked up that foul. Maycumber will pick up the foul and it was on the drive, so it's going to be a possession foul out of bounds as nobody's over the bonus situation yet, and that was obviously not in the act of shooting. So five seconds even, but no river. That was blocked. I tell you what, Dalto got out there. I don't know if they had a chat and said Dalto. Oh, and I think she got finger in the eye as Cornell going to come out of the ball game and they're going to have Fox take her spot. Hopefully Cornell will be okay, but. Defensively, it looks like they put Dalto to shadow Cornell out there. Ely catches, fires, and got it at the buzzer! Ely at the buzzer! Oh, yeah. Going to be a good fourth quarter. It's a 10-point lead for the Minutemen, but a lot of time left. Uh, for you. Kirk Abrahamson, who is the head soccer coach at the high school in the city up by the dump. That's his assistant coach, Jay Wilson, in there. Kirk must be going to officiate the varsity game, and of course Jay's going to help coach his son Kyle in the varsity game, so that could be fun down there. I'll bring it back down to the JV game now. And, well, eight minutes left in regulation, each team with three team fouls apiece. And Kyle Weatherhog going to come on over and take the ball out of bounds for the Minutemen. Nope, she is not. Fox just told her to get out of there. I'm going to take the ball out of bounds. They're going to put Files defensively right now matching up against Weatherhog as Ely with the basketball. Remember, she just hit that three ball at the buzzer. The buzzer going a long distance. Oh, just off the mark. Kamara got the rebound. Now Files going to run the point. Files taking that mouthpiece out to make the call. Nice grab by Dalto. Dalto was big for Fairhaven in that third quarter. She made the save there, but unfortunately right back to Mill River. To Ely on the break, going to take her right in and draw the foul. Two shots coming up for Ely. She'll step to the line. That's a good forward push, a good north-south thrust down the floor by the Mill River offense that time on the break. And they'll have Ely now. Looking to add to that 10-point Mill River lead. So Mill River scoring 18 points in that third quarter. Four more points than they scored in the first two quarters combined. She'll miss that one. So Burden up. Burden will get it. Oh, yeah. That's good hustle by Burden. She beat a couple of Fairhaven players to the loose basketball to the rebound. And got it. Files to Smith. Back to Files. Now Files, somebody, Dalto or Files, somebody's got to get high here in this fourth quarter offensively for Fairhaven. That was a good job of getting the ball down to Kamara, number 30. So Rachel Kamara. That chance to score some points here from the free throw line, which means the clock stopped and seven minutes straight up to go here in the fourth quarter. And I'm not sure. Oh, they didn't have the alignment on the box. There you go. An easy one to catch and fix, and they did, and they're all set now to take the shots. And that had a lot of height on it, but needed about eight more inches forward. So Kamara getting set. Got it. So it took, took a time there to get there, but she'll make it. And looking for Muzzy on the break on the front end to pass too long. And 
And the ball will go out of bounds to Fairhaven. Again, they're right in the ballgame. They're only down by 11. It was a one-point game at the half, 14 to 13 Mill River. To Kamara, and he'll put the ball on the floor, and it went off her foot and picked up by Kyle Weatherhog. And Bird now, as the defense goes back and clears, will dribble it up to Ely in the front court. In the corner, to Fox. And I believe they got Dalto battling Burden, and that's going to be the call. And that'll be the fifth team foul. No shot shot. Ball out of bounds on the baseline. It's going to bring both Maycumber and Ellis in for Fairhaven. They're going to replace Files and Smith. And they'll pass the ball up top to Weatherhog. No. The lefty from outside was off the mark, and the rebound will come down to Maycumber. With the quick push, get the ball to the free throw line. The Dalto, she's going long distance with it. No. Rebound. Fox, Kamara, Kamara, foul. Got it. Kamara. Got the basket. That was about as strong move as you'll see any varsity player make. First of all, she took the ball away from a strong player from Mill River, and the fact that Fox. And then she was able to uh, have her head about it and turn right to the basket and put it in as Cornell has recovered for Mill River, and she will replace Fox, who picked up her first personal foul in that last whistle. And Shapiro also going to be at scores table for Mill River, and she will wait as Kamara will make it a three-point play and cut the lead to eight at 34-26. And now after the made basket for Haven's going to extend the defense into the backcourt. And Emma Weatherhog back in the ballgame. And Emma had a big third quarter for Mill River. Cornell knocked the ball away, but chased back down by Kamara. Ellis catches, fires, no front rim to rebound. Dalto got the foul. Now, will they say shooting in the act of shooting? I believe she was. And two shots. That's what I was waiting to see what Dan will call, but it's going to be a full timeout taken by Mill River, and this happens with six minutes even to go, and Fairhaven getting back into the ball game, down by just eight with a couple of free throws coming up on Munger Vision. All set now after that timeout. Whoa. Oh, I had to wait. I had to wait for that second bounce. I've seen those drop in. That one just didn't cooperate with her. And And she will somehow nurse that second shot up and in. Cuts it to a seven point ball game. As Cornell to Weatherhog, we got in front of Ellis, back to Cornell. So Madison Cornell will be picked up. It will be Dalto defensively. Getting back on Cornell, you see her get out there on her. And travel called. Muzzy called for the travel. She was trying to put the shot up, it was partially blocked. And wasn't a lot of room there to get the shot off. And on that turnover, Fairhaven. Kind of feel the momentum a little bit, kicking toward Fairhaven. Dalto, back on the pass. Oh, great pass. Shot wouldn't go. That's Kamara, I believe, one more time. No, nah, she got it. I'm sorry, that's Studley. Studley on the board. She's got the basket. It's a five-point ball game with 5.27 to go. Last touch by Muzzy out of bounds, and Fairhaven's definitely got the momentum on their side now. I thought might see Mill River extend the defense here. But they're going to go back and get set in that zone. And coming in will be Turgeon with the four fouls. And she'll replace Muzzy. And they're going to just let the officials get in position now. This place kind of got into a frenzy and then it settled down. Oh, the Studley? No. Another offensive rebound. Up and foul. Going to the line. Kamara this time was fouled. And I'm not sure, I think it's Shapiro, but I'll wait to see the officials. Right, it was Shapiro and it was her third personal. So Turgeon and Shapiro in foul trouble. Turgeon with four, Shapiro with three. And the lead down to five, and the clock stopped at 5.14 and Kamara. Now Fairhaven's gotten back into this thing. Not that they ever that far out of it. On the miss, sir. 
as Muzzy coming out and Turgeon with the four fouls coming back in. Well, yeah, I think he, I think the coach, and I'm speculating, seeing that for, for him getting a lot of second chance rebounds here, some offense rebounds, bringing back in Turgeon because she'll deter that from happening. And Kamara will be one of two this time. 34-30, and Emma Weatherhog with the grab will bring it back to Cornell. And foul on Kamara, good call. That's gonna be the sixth foul and a push in the back will be the call, there'll be no shot yet. And so, Mill River already with 17 fouls, Fraver just picked up their six. And that means everybody shooting from now on, the 507 to go in the fourth quarter. Emma, no. Emma Weatherhog took the shot. The rebound came down to Kamara and she handed the ball off to Maycumber. So the Slaters keep chipping away. Dalto not wanting to go down to Studley up and tough shot. She almost got it though. Kamara, tough shot. Cornell, Kimba, they got two chances on the boards again and that's something that, that's gonna be a foul on Ellis shot. Blocking, that's a good call. As in an unintentional as it was, it was a good call. And it should be the one and one. As there they go. Dan realizes it now. It's Shirley Brousseau. There's another legend Hall of Fame coach over there that helps the scorer's table. And so Kyle Weatherhog with the one and one right now. 440 to go in a four point ball game. These are huge free throws. Oh, rimmed out. Halfway down, pop back out. Studley back in the ball game after sitting quite a while, just making quite an impact being in there. To Kamara, tough angle. No, she didn't have the angle to take the shot. She was down the floor on the baseline, good hustle. But by the time she caught it, she'd gone behind the backboard. And only Larry Bird could do those things, make those baskets. So Ellis and company have yet another chance to cut into the lead. Ellis, no. Another offensive rebound, no, they're rushing the second shots. Blocked down inside by Cornell and then Turgeon stepped on the inline out of bounds. Great action in that sequence. It's Ely coming in for Emma Weatherhog, four mill river. And Ellis to Kamara to Maycumber. Ellis tries this side, nope. A little bit longer and stronger, and boy, you can hear all kinds of slapping going on as I believe Studley will pick up the foul. Yes, she will. And Shapiro going to take the walk down the other end of the floor, and she'll take the shots. And so Shapiro, I believe it's the first time she's been to the line tonight. Takes her time, looks, and coils, fires, no. That's Dalto, yeah. Dalto has just played a great ball game for Fairhaven. She got there, got the basketball. Now it seems like Fairhaven's had at least four trips down to cut in the lead and just can't execute the basket. Ellis to Dalto, got it! Three-pointer for Dalto! Got a one-point contest, 34-33. That's a loose ball picked up by Maycumber as after the made basket, Fairhaven went to a full-court press and the basket's good and Fairhaven has come all the way back from 11 down to take the lead and I'll tell you what, Mill River's got to kind of settle, settle down and compose themselves. Ely, wild shot put up and whistles are finally blowing and who's going to go to the line? I mean, it's going to be Mill River, but who from Mill River is going to the line? Turgeon going to the line. Well, I'll tell you what. This has been one of the best JV games I've done all year. Fairhaven down by 11. Midway through the third. Now with a one-point lead. Tied at 35 on Turgeon's free throw. And Fox coming in the ball game for Cornell, and that was... Ellis' fourth personal. That's also the ninth team foul on Fairhaven, which means the next foul they commit will be two shots automatically the rest of the night for Mill River. And 
Turgeon will give the Minutemen back the lead, 36-35. Dalto, tough shot from the baseline, no good. Rebound, Shapiro tied up by Studley. Studley, Shapiro, jump ball. Gonna be Mill River basketball. That's a good call by the coach after the made basket for Fairhaven to go to the full court press. You can see it just totally catch Mill River completely off guard. Weatherhog back to Fox, and she's got the middle of the floor open, so she will bring it up between circles to Kyle Weatherhog. Three minutes to go in regulation. That's going to be knocked away and into the hands of Maycumber, and she'll bring the ball down the floor herself for the Slaters. Munger Vision bringing this JV contest. Studley had a block, I believe it was Shapiro. The putback, no good. Kamara one more time, no good. Studley will try it. Studley, no. Look at the chances for the Slaters. And it's going to be a timeout taken, I believe, by Mill River. 36 35. The Minutemen with the lead in JV basketball action on Munger Vision. But Fairhaven will have the ball after the fade. All the missed putbacks by Fairhaven. They'd have a double digit lead right now. Turgeon with the four falls, they went right down and attacked her. Nice shot, but staying straight up in the air by Turgeon. Then the pick by Studley, up foul, Dalton going to the line, foul beyond Cornell. Great action. That happened a lot faster than you see most JV's tempo played at. And so Dalto at the line. They have that as Cornell's second personal. We're tied at 36. Like I said, Dalto has been instrumental here in Fairhaven's comeback in the second half. It's Burden coming in for Shapiro, for Mill River. Burden wearing number 33. In case you haven't figured it out yet, Mill River in the white. And nope, we'll stay tied. As Cornell turns the corner. Boy, they got the numbers. Ely taking it all the way in. Got it. Boy. No transition defense that time by the Slaters and Mill River with a good push, burned them on it. The lead 38-36, Mill River. Files, shoulder of the ball, brought it out, got sealed off on the baseline, goes to Studley, turns, fires, no good. Another offensive board. I got to tell you, they got to be around 20 offensive rebounds, seriously. And look at the steal by Files. And the foul, Files. All by herself, created that mess for Mill River. Tied at 38 with two minutes and one second to go. Regulation and Files will step to the line and take the shot. Two shots, actually. And just for the heck of it, that's the third foul on Cornell. And each team now with nine team fouls. As Elizabeth Files will break the tie. 39-38. Like I said, Mill River in the third quarter had an 11-point lead. From Fairhaven, like I told you, at the start of the fourth quarter. A lot of time left. She'll keep the trend of one for two. Turgeon had the ball taken away by Studley, and that's a tough pass. Burden with the steal in the corner, and here comes the numbers again. Ely with a two on two. Count up basket, and Ely hard to the floor. We'll feel much better now the basket counts. Ely with some big time plays here. She had the buzzer speeding shot for three points before the half, and she's had two drives finished off here, and Ellis coming in for Maycomber for Fairhaven. Ellis will be wearing number 12. Well, of course, the gym pack now is it's late enough for people getting ready for the varsity game, but they're seeing a dandy in the fourth quarter here for the JV squad, who's playing in front of a packed gym now, something they never usually see. And that's Ely on Dalto, and that's gonna be all yeah. Dal Dalto, good job, just kept driving the ball, just going to line and shoot two. Ely just never got set defensively. She didn't beat her to the spot, and she basically rode her down the floor, and that's what the call is. That's the 10th team foul. Like I said, two shots now. And in a 40-39 game, Dalto looking to tie it up here on the first free throw. We are tied at 40. 
Now see if Dalto can break that trend to make one miss one here. They get a lot of time left, minute 45, which will take about seven minutes in tape time to pass. She got it. It was close. I like the change up in defense again. They went to the press. Soft press, but a press. Ely, left, right, left, right. Got it up the floor. Cornell, down to Turgeon. Push called from behind. I believe Studley now send Mill River to the line. Now the thing there on that possession about Mill River is they definitely had a sense of urgency, but you can have an over sense of urgency and almost like a panic mode. They have a minute 35 to work with and they're only down by a point. So you gotta make sure to keep the ball, you know, the possession of the ball and take a good shot. It worked out for him because they got the fouls, but Turgeon will tie it up at 41. And Lamaru coming in for Studley. She got three, she has three fouls, but I can't understand taking her out of the ball game this late in the fourth quarter of a close ball. Game. She's a difference maker, Studley is. And she'll front rim it, so both teams. And now Kamara will go down and take some shots. Both teams shooting just about 50% from the free throw line. So Kamara, who's been just about that herself, will head to the free throw line. 41 all, and that's the third foul on Burden. And I'll bring Fox back off the scores table, and Fox will have to wait to the second shot. Yeah, I waited all season for a JV game of this magnitude. I don't think that's the correct adjective I wanted. Of this closeness and competitiveness and intensity. Of this intensity, that's what I want. There is that good old well, high school education coming through. And uh, again, made one, missed one. Each team doing the same thing. 42, 41. Mill River has got a lot of time. They don't have to panic here. Just run the normal offense, yep. Tough catch. The ball is going to be covered by Weatherhog. 114 to go in regulation. Fox to Ely. I don't believe they're going to play for the last shot. It might work out that way. But that, oh, that's an offensive foul they didn't call. That's a terrible no call. You can't throw your elbow up like that. Fox, baseline. The kick out. That's a three ball. Cornell! A lot of time left. You're only down by two points. You're down by one basket. Did they call a timeout? Yes, they did. Okay, so they're going to have a timeout. I'll have to get the ball placement, but it's 44 42. Mill River with the lead, which is 43 seconds left in regulation. Not to put any pressure on in the backcourt. They're going to just set up in their 2 3 zone. Fair Haven's got the same deal. Don't panic. Run your normal offense. You've got a lot of time left. <laughs> Dalto looking baseline was doubled, got up in the air, gave the ball out to Kamara. Back to Dalto, baseline, forced it up, tough angle. Tough shot, foul. That's okay. The way the free throws have gone tonight, they're only shooting 50%. Worst case scenario, You'll be down by three after the free throws. Of course, unless she makes them both. So Cornell, a little pressure here. But you gotta remember, she's hit four threes unofficially in the ball game, and the last three gave Mill River back the lead. So I think she can handle pressure. Beautiful. That's Studley now coming back in the contest for Fairhaven. 28.2 seconds going. Here's the big shot. This would make it a four point lead. And Cornell has not done it. Ah, she's going to break it, the streak. And stolen away by Weatherhog. Blocked from behind. Weatherhog with the great play and then Files with the great play. Three ball in it for the tie. Off the mark. It's going to come back out. Files steps up. No. Kamara. No. Studley got it. Six seconds. Timeout taken. 5.5 seconds on the clock. And what they got going on? Okay. It's going to be Mill River basketball. They're down by Mill River's up by one. 
first thing you want to watch for is, is Fairhaven going to put somebody defensively on the inbounds pass or are they going to play five on four? Lately, nobody put nobody on the passer to try to deny the ball coming in. See what they want to do there. Then if Mill River does get the ball into play, you got to foul immediately, you would think, because there's only 5.5 seconds to go. But first things first, Mill River's got to get the ball into play first. And it's going to be Fox taking the ball out of bounds. Me, personally, I'd play off the ball. I'd double off the ball. Kamara, number 30. Fox going to take the ball out of bounds. And who did go off from? Going off from Files out of bounds. So, so close for Fairhaven. 4.6 seconds to go in the basketball game. There it is, Turgeon. Going to hold it. And with 1.3 seconds to go, they're going to send Turgeon to the line. But it's all but just about, well, for Havens fans wanting a jump ball called. And I, I know that they're young. I understand they're young players. If Turgeon dribbles 10 more feet, the clock expires. I don't know why she came to a dead stop and held the ball. Got it. Now that makes it a two-point ball game. It is possible to get the rebound here and shoot it for a three-point shot, but they'll have to be at least between circles on the defensive side of the ball. Got it. So Fairhaven has 1.3 seconds to get the ball up and in play. And that's going to be a turnover, and that's going to be tipped. going to be the other way. This is going to be Mill River basketball. How can it go down there if it was tipped? Well, all they basically got to do is get the ball in play. I think it's, is it a warning? Push, okay. And so, and what was a wild one, it finished wild. And so that is five fouls on Dalto who had a tremendous ball game for a fair haven. <laughs> and Mill River gonna win this contest. It's just by, right now, it's just by how much of a difference. <laughs> Madison Cornell hit the go-ahead three-point shot and then hit the big free throws. And Emma Weatherhog coming in the ball game, number 24. She had a huge third quarter, helped turn the momentum around for Mill River. And that's gonna be the ball game. Yeah, so Mill River will win their final home game of the season. A great effort by both teams. And coach, both coaches did a good job. So it's a 47-44 Mill River win over Fairhaven in what was my final girls JV basketball game. Congratulations to both teams. This has been Munger Vision.